Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Seclared Chatterbox, the show where we talk about what's on our mind and the topics of the day and our experiences. And uh, another in the series of talking about some of the uh, new medicines we have here at Seclair and Z Harmony. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed the yoga episode we've had on previously. It's the same cast of characters again. <laughs> but in case is true. The, yeah. Yeah. I'm Mike Sorga, the uh, director of web media here at Seclair, and I'll go around the table to introduce in case this is the first episode you've, you've checked out because you're so interested in Reiki. So let's uh, go ahead. Okay, well, I'm Julie Margo. I am the Reiki master here at Seclair. I also work with essential oils and... Get silly with the Reiki lady. Yay. We're with the yoga Yay. ladies. <laughs> Yay for Julie. <laughs> uh, Julie is my Reiki lady. <laughs> I am Mary Angela Mancuso, and I am a registered yoga teacher. I teach the group classes here at Seclair, and I do one-on-one -on -one privates, and um, I also teach at uh, Torrance State Hospital. Deb Dietrich, participant in these yoga Zumba. Not with Reiki. <laughs> I'm going to. But that's about the change. That's about yeah. the change. We'll get into a little bit. Yeah. And I'm Carol Scheffler, and I teach the Zumba here at Saint Clair. Um, also have experience in yoga, and uh, this will be first experience in Reiki Wonderful. too for me today. So fantastic. New blood. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. So please explain to us uh, what is Reiki, and kind of tell us how you kind of came across doing this practice okay um, well Reiki is an energetic healing practice um, that balances and relaxes your body to the point where you can allow your own natural healing to come forward um, our bodies actually know how to be well and we get in the way with all of our stuff so when we are holding that guy at work who said thus and so in our belly we're, have, we're creating a blockage there. Mm -hmm. What Reiki can do is help us relax that blockage, maybe notice it to begin with, but the Reiki helps it to relax so that that can come up and you can release any pre-ulcer <laughs> or other things that might be forming there because of that stress. Mm -hmm. um, I have a description here. This is actually from the Cleveland Clinic website. They have Reiki services at the Cleveland Clinic. We're going to talk about some other hospitals as well. But I like the way they termed it here. It says Reiki is a form of hands-on natural healing that uses universal life force energy. The term comes from the Japanese words Rei, which translates to universal, and Ki, which means the vital life force energy that flows through all living things. This gentle energy is limitless in abundance and is believed to be a spiritual form of energy is not tied to any specific religion or nationality. So I, I just thought that was very clear and concise. Um, another thing I'd like to say about Re Reiki is it's very experiential. So it's one of those things that when people start asking questions, we certainly can have a conversation and I say, would you like to try it? <laughs> because it really is something that you can get a better handle on once you've felt what it feels like. Because uh, it, it does seem like something that, uh, when explaining it, something somebody can really kind of poo-poo it and just say, you know, oh, that's that's a bunch of you know whatever. Hooey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good word. Hooey. Hooey. Yeah. Um, how did you uh, come to get involved in Reiki? Um, I have been aware of energy for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, a specific memory I have is being in seventh grade and spending the night at my friend Bridget's house. <laughs> and I don't remember how we got to this, but I was holding my hands about an inch apart, like you're going to clap. Mm -hmm. um, and I could feel a pressure between them. And if you guys want to try this, mm -hmm. I invite you to. Yeah, I love this. Um, it's like a little magnetic push. And I said to Bridget, I said, you know, when you do this, do you feel something? What, what is that? And we just thought, oh, that's weird. And then we went on being seventh graders and didn't really do, do anything <laughs> with it. We didn't, you know, it was just something weird. But I can re very clearly remember playing with that. And I've realized um, since that that's something I used to do when I was bored or stressed. You know, I would just kind of soothe myself by touching in with that, that energy, not really even knowing what it was. Uh, fast forward to when I had children when they would get boo-boos or be upset again i would feel this energy moving in my hands and i wasn't really sure what it was i felt like it was a healing um, energy but i wasn't sure so i didn't really 
explore too much with it at that point, but I was aware of it still. Fast forward again to about six years ago and I joined a meditation group. This is where I met my Reiki master. <laughs> she actually held a, an overnight for the women in the group and she said, and we're going to do a healing circle. And I thought, great. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. I don't know what it is. So she had a cot laid out and we all, one of the women laid on the cot and we all knelt around her. And I looked across at the woman who was, who was opposite me and I said, you know, I don't know what to do. She said, put your hands on and see what happens. And when the circle started and I put my hands on, I felt that energy flowing again and I was home, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at that point, I knew that this was something that I wanted to pursue and I started um, studying and practicing and here we are. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So, um, so again, you're, you're big on... You know, let's learn by doing, and we yes. have some a volunteer here. <laughs> so uh, let's let's get uh, that set up here. Okay. Um, and uh, so, I mean, what have you heard about Reiki before this? Not really much of anything. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit with talking with Julie at a couple other events that we have participated in. Any expectations going into this? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Yeah. If you want to explain to since this is an audio. Okay, can can you hear me all right? Something yeah, you're right good. Here? Okay, great. Good. Um, so first off, do I have your permission to give you Reiki? You do. Yeah. Okay, and just to let you know what some people do experience, some people will feel some heat or maybe tingling, perhaps a little coolness, vibration. Um, some people don't notice anything at all, and there's really no incorrect way to experience Reiki. The energy is flowing, even if you don't notice it. I've had people say, well, I didn't feel anything. And then we talk for a little while, and they realize they're just so relaxed. <laughs> they just they feel good. wonderful. They didn't notice anything with that Reiki stuff, but they feel wonderful. So I, I, I'm always very excited to um, give treatment to new people because I like to hear their experience. Okay. So do I have my permission to give you Reiki? Please do. And may I put my hands directly on you? You may. Okay. So basically, I just take a moment and connect and feel the energy flowing in my hands. And then you'll notice I asked if I could put my hands directly on her. You can you do Reiki also with um, without touching because it's energy. So now I'm feeling the energy flowing. What are you noticing? Nothing really. Nothing. Out. Okay. That's fine. So uh, during a Reiki treatment, uh, there are different hand positions you use, and they are aligned on the major body systems so that we can help those systems move to balance. As I said, some people will feel warmth or tingling. Most people feel very profoundly relaxed. Mm -hmm. So what I'm feeling in my hands right now is a lot of heat and a lot of tingling. Um, it feels actually very balanced. Good job. <laughs> sometimes, oh, yeah. sometimes one side will be more more you, active. You didn't than tell me that an hour ago. I just don't know in my session. You, she didn't tell I me that. Zoom, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so do I, right? Mm -hmm. Carolyn was in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pete say didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, Julie, is it true? I heard this. Um, you may remember a conversation we had where I said that um, I wanted to do Reiki mm -hmm. and I wanted to learn learn to do it, and the lady refused to teach me. <laughs> okay. She told me no, <laughs> and I said no. I really want to learn. She said no. You don't need to have Reiki because you already know people. And I told you, like I said, I didn't understand what she meant. Well, I met a person probably uh, three weeks ago. Um, actually, she's been a, a student of mine. We got into a big conversation, and she has a Reiki master, and she was told the same thing. And I said, well, what is that about? I always wondered what that was about. And she said, her Reiki master says, because you are a receiver, not a sender. And you can't necessarily get involved in the sending process because you're too strong in the receiving end. Even though you can receive and, and let that go out to you, 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 you receive in from people. You don't, you're not a channeler. You don't, you don't give it out. 
What's your opinion? Have you um, come across that? I actually have not. That's very interesting. Yeah. So they're saying that you can't learn to do Reiki? Well, that's what or... this Re- Reiki master, the her Reiki master said, because mm-hmm. I never had an explanation. I just thought the lady didn't want to teach me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, it's been my experience that everyone can learn yeah. Reiki. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in fact, I've had students that after the training and attunement have said, Oh, thank God. I thought it wasn't going to work on me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have not had that that yeah. experience at all. Every, it, it's my firm belief and knowing that everyone can learn mm-hmm. to do Reiki. Yeah. Okay. I just was wondering where that, where that came from. I don't know I had where never that heard about from. that. Yeah. That either. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And maybe, maybe they were uh, alluding to the fact that of uh, the needed training. But to say that you could not do the training, yeah, yeah, I, I, that, I was that, that, that was curious. That was that's always been a curiosity yeah. to me about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how about now, Deb? I do feel warmth now. Okay. Carol, do you think her face changed? Well, she seems a lot calmer and yeah. relaxed. Yeah, her face looks like it relaxed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's levitating everyone. <laughs> <laughs> She's she about just, an inch off the just, chair. It's interesting just <laughs> observing this because I really have never. But um, I at one time worked as an OB nurse, mm-hmm. and I had a couple of midwives that I really enjoyed working mm-hmm. with at the, the hospital that I was working at. And the one used to help like the patients if they needed a break or something. She would do this um, thing with her hands over the abdominal area and actually give that woman a chance to take a, a break from the contractions. I actually have observed contractions stopping for like a 15 minute rest wow. for this woman to mm-hmm. take a little nap. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as she was, you know, but she would do some kind of touch stuff and it really seemed to. Knock those contractions out when Isn't she would mean? do that. Yeah. So I guess she was practicing a little bit of, that's kind of what I'm observing as I watch you do it mm-hmm. on Deb, you know, that same kind of healing, I guess, giving that woman a break through her labor. Nice. Yeah. I, I don't know that technique. That's fascinating. Uh-huh. Um, there are a lot of different um, energy modalities. Okay. They are very, I feel like they are, They there's... Vanilla, there's chocolate, there's butter pecan, and it's all ice cream. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. And same with yoga. Mm-hmm. Like we were talking about sooner. You know, there's different types of yoga, just mm-hmm. finding what, but it's all the same. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and yeah, when I do yoga, it feels, uh-huh. like, it feels like what works for energy medicine there for me mm-hmm. as well. Right. Right. Um, so after, I'm interested, after um, the birthing mother had the rest, did the way her... Um, contractions and labor progressed after that was there a difference well it uh well obviously because the woman needed a break Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so she was more rested she could deal with the labor and everything Mm -hmm. it was one of those things where she was and i mean working in ob i mean i had i got to see different ways and of course she this woman wanted to try without the epidural and try to use as less pain medication that she could through her labor Mm -hmm. and um and it was amazing because it it she, once she had that break, because it really helped her to deal with the rest of the labor, absolutely, and the, and and delivering of the baby, you know. Because I mean, she, unfortunately, it was her first. I believe it was her first baby, and she was up all night, and and you know how sometimes labor can go for a couple of days, and you're not getting right. any sleep. But at that point, she saw that this woman needed that break, and instead of pushing medication into her arm to help her, she tried this. And I mean, not that it. it Sometimes it is useful for some women, but she tried it and it worked. And I just observed that, and that this is what it kind of reminds me yeah, of. Yeah, wonderful. You know, um, what she was doing with her patient. You know, that's cool. So mm-hmm. it was neat. Um, another another technique, I guess, that I've been trained in. It's called sacred childbirth of Reiki. Okay. Um, and during this, here I'm going to move on to you. We, Oh, sure. All right. Absolutely. So do I have permission to give you yes. Reiki? Yes. All right. You can and touch, from... too. Awesome. <laughs> so, whoa. Um, I'm not going to talk there. That's all right. Uh, but you could. It does not okay. It does not disturb, doesn't disturb the flow it. at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so with the sacred childbirth with Reiki, that is a modality where I work with the mom while she's pregnant. I'm not actually in the delivery room. Hmm. Um, ideally, she would be attuned to Reiki, and so would her partner so that they could um, treat each other throughout the pregnancy and then during the labor and delivery. Hmm. But you're also using, uh, 
meditative techniques and Reiki energy to clear out any past traumas or beliefs about pain, about what birth is, what it has to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's really, it's fascinating and very, very powerful work. So are you noticing any sensation? Yes, I am. To be honest, right in the neck area. And I know I'm sore on this side mm -hmm. and it seems heat there. Okay, and just I for feel a lot of heat in the uh, area on the right, okay, my right uh, neck and down, and and that shoulder area it gets tight, so I feel heat there now. Okay, and my hands are on the top of your head. Yes, correct? And my hands are on top of my head. <laughs> um, that brings up a really good point. Uh, Reiki energy will flow to where it's needed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's something our bodies recognize, and uh, when we are receiving Reiki energy. The cells of our body say yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> more please. Yeah, and, that's and, like my session with you today because mm -hmm. um, I have a shoulder issue that I'm dealing with. It's quite painful right now. Mm -hmm. And when she was near her, where were your hands? I forgot, a throat chakra mm -hmm. on that one? Yeah, mm -hmm. you were at the uh, throat. And uh, that pain had gone down into my hand. Like um, we were discussing what had happened there because it was like a big cramp started to happen in my hand. And then and then it just kind of like opened and, and cleared out. And it wasn't like my hand curled up. It was just internally feeling that. And then uh, that was like the, the opening a blockage that I had there from the from the shoulder pain going mm -hmm. out. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah, and lessened it. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. Like with what mm -hmm. Carol was saying, and I've been a paramedic for 40 some years, mm -hmm. and I noticed that many times just my hands on the patient was something that seemed to calm them and absolutely ha help to ease their pain or their trauma that they were going through at that time. Mm -hmm. And I never thought of it as being anything coming from me, but just other than a soothing hand. But well, and a hand is more. soothing. A hand is soothing. And I think that's one of the big uh, pluses with Reiki, especially in our culture. Touch has become so suspect. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is yeah. true. And um, I mean, to be honest, babies need to be oh, held and mm -hmm. touched and massaged. And, mm -hmm. you know, it depends on their survival. They're thriving. Right. Right? Absolutely. And in fact, they do studies and they have people come in, especially in their ICUs, just have people hold those babies mm -hmm. because... Mm -hmm. They need that to survive. The babies that I always delivered in the ambulance, that, and there was that holding because the mother was never really able, when you're in an emergency situation right. in an ambulance, the mother usually doesn't take the baby then. And well, it sure. was always me. <laughs> so, Lucky. Yes, that, and I loved it. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. That's wonderful. It's like being a mom all over again from <laughs> all the childbirth. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Um, babies and children adore Reiki. I'm sure. It's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And they'll come, um, I've had, I've had toddlers come sit in my lap and, <laughs> and my hands light up and they just want to sit with me for a minute and then they're done mm -hmm. because they're, they're okay. really so clear. So tuned in. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they take what they want and they go animals the same way. Mm -hmm. Animals the same way. I had a, a friend brought over her dog. She does, oh, what's the, Toto, that dog. But the, um, was it a boss? <laughs> yes, yes. yes, yeah, that, that, was, was that kind of dog. I don't remember oh, the breed. He wasn't a was he? Or a Karen Terrier, one of the other. Karen Terrier. Karen Terrier. Yeah, okay. And one of hers had um, arthritis, and she was really having um, trouble with that, and she was very stressed out. So she said, you know, we give Reiki to my dog? I said, sure, <laughs> um, bring her out. But it's, you know, it's obviously up to the animal. Mm -hmm. um, you can't force Reiki on anyone. Um, so I sat on the floor and the dog didn't want to have anything to do with me. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. She was staying with mama. So uh, my friend was sitting on the floor and we were sitting on the floor and I was holding myself in the space of Reiki energy. And the dog came a little closer and then came a little closer. And before you knew it, she was sleeping in my lap. Oh. <laughs> um, so I held, held that dog for a, probably a good 35, 40 minutes. Uh -huh. And and she just slept and um, was in quite a different mood when they left, <laughs> when mm -hmm. they got there. So what are you noticing now? I like to go take a nap on the couch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah I'm ready to go yeah, take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very relaxed right now. Good. 
Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that I do um, is I volunteer at the hospital at um, Allegheny Valley Hospital in Echerna Heights. And I'm there one day a week, and we're, we're building a whole program. There will be more Reiki volunteers there. Right now we have people there two days a week uh, working with pa- patients in the oncology unit. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. Wonderful. And, yeah, people are very, very receptive. A lot of people have not heard of Reiki before, but for those that are willing to try, mm-hmm. they are really uh, giving us wonderful feedback. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's also a program in place at Allegheny General Hospital. It's been there since 2002. Um, and they do have volunteers there every week, every day of the week. And I have a list over there of hospitals that have joined uh, this one site. There's a list of 68 hospitals that offer Reiki, and those are just the ones that have, have um, registered on this one site. So the, wow. it really is a growing thing in this country. Um, Cleveland Clinic, the National Institutes of Health, uh, Sloan Kettering Cancer Institute in New York, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Johns Hopkins. Yeah. A lot of the big guns in Western medicine have um, Reiki available to patients. And it looks like uh, this is available at ReikiInHospitals.org yes. if anybody wants to check it out. Absolutely. So let's see if there. And I also have, uh, oh, I don't think this is something else. Oh, that's okay. That is a, a list of uh, government clinical trials that are going okay. on. Okay. And this is at clinicaltrials.gov. I imagine the search for, for uh, Reiki will bring these up. Yeah. Thank you so Come back much. around to the uh, microphone. Back <laughs> Thank you. Julie. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. It was wonderful. Yeah, it is. Very so very try um, it. <laughs> yes. like, so, We're all in another space. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little bit during, but you, you know, this is your first time, right? Mm-hmm. What, what what did it feel like? It was relaxing. Mm-hmm. Very relaxed. That's how I feel right very, now. Very, very relaxed. And and I as I think about it too, yeah, because I've been having back and shoulder pain, and that seemed to mm-hmm. be where the heat was energized. Mm, mm. The same here. Heat's mm-hmm. right here in that right neck down the shoulder, which is an area that's usually very tight and sore for me. So I feel the heat there still, still there. Mm-hmm. Mine too. Even though her hands are not on me, the heat is still there. So that's great. Mm-hmm. It's definitely. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. I, I it's kind of it. like putting biofreeze on, but there's none on there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's actual bio. It's actual <laughs> bio. Yeah. yeah, that's what I like when I have a session with Julie is that she'll be moving around your body, but you but you don't know it. You think she's just in one place or this, uh, or several or another uh, one or two places the whole time. And <laughs> the one time she told me to open my eyes and look at her, and she's standing there, her hands weren't even on me wow and i said how long have you been there and she said about five minutes <laughs> and i'm describing what was happening you know but it, yeah it, it's like that energy just it just flushes out it stays with you and uh, it's uh, like almost a comforting feeling at mm-hmm. times too mm-hmm. very yeah yeah that's a really nice way of putting it um my mother-in-law um she actually transitioned last year but before crossing over she had been in a nursing home for uh, 18 months, uh, right around that, that amount of time with Alzheimer's. And we would go and visit and I would just sit and hold her hand and give her Reiki that way. Mm-hmm. Um, because some in some situations it's just, you know, you can't really reach all the hand positions or it may just not be appropriate. Um, but she would sit and she would feel calmer. And I swear that the second to the last time that we went to visit her, um, she recognized her son, my husband, yeah. which she hadn't done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's nice. so touching. Yeah, it really, it was amazing. It was that's amazing. Neat. And I think that the, the Reiki energy allowed that calmness to come through her and for her to really kind of come back into herself. Because um, I don't know how many people, probably everyone here has, has had um, family members or friends who have had the challenge of Alzheimer's. And they really just... Mm-hmm near the end are not there their bodies are still there but they're not but it mm-hmm. kind of helped her come back in and you could see the recognition it was amazing mm-hmm. it was amazing yeah. how wonderful yeah. so now that i got a little cherry <laughs> <laughs> um well how did you um i think we had a discussion before about the training it's really interesting uh kind of the back the backstory of where reiki came from right and the the kind of lineage of trainers if yes I, if I recall. yes very good very good <laughs> um reiki was discovered some say rediscovered uh by macau usui 
in the late 1800s, early 1900s in Japan um, during a fasting meditation. And there are, there are a lot of different stories leading up to how it happened. Um, and all of it is uh, in the oral tradition, so people add their own things. We do know that Mikao Usui was the founder of Reiki as we know it today. Um, he taught Dr. Hayashi, who was actually a medical doctor in Japan, and uh, they had a clinic. Dr. Hayashi is the one who instituted the hand positions, and he had Reiki practitioners working in pairs on a patient and wanted to really cover all the body systems. Mrs. Takata, Hawaii Takata, Hoeo Takata. <laughs> now I've been doing Reiki and you want me to speak. <laughs> um, was a Hawaiian born Japanese. And she went back to Japan for treatment uh, of some pretty serious gastrointestinal issues and was headed for surgery. Said to the nurse, as the story goes, on the operating table, said to the nurse, Is there some other way? Is there something else I could do? And the nurse said, Yes. And it brought her to um, Dr. Hayashi's clinic where she was treated. She stayed there for three months and she did not ever have surgery. Um, she took the training, brought it back to um, Hawaii where it was part of her practice, but quietly so because we are now at the late 1930s, 1940 being Japan, Japanese or having anything of Japanese um, flavor in Hawaii in 1940 was not really mm -hmm. <laughs> acceptable. socially acceptable. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. But she built her practice and she continued the training, continued working, uh, and in the 1970s brought Reiki to the mainland U.S. Mm -hmm. And she actually trained 22 Reiki masters. And from there, uh, all the Reiki practitioners in this country came came down. And most people can track their lineage back to Dr. Usui, I can. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. Because then you can look at the at the lines, the lineage, and see, you know, okay, we train, have the same people in our lineage to this point, and then it splintered off. Um, which is a way you can look at uh, how people might have different technique they might have a little different training, mm -hmm. a little different understanding, because it's all coming down word of mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, my training, I worked with uh, my Reiki master. Uh, you take Reiki one, it's a day or two day training, but that's really just the, the uh, mechanics of it. There's the attunement, excuse me, which opens you to allow the energy to flow through. And... Um, then there's practicing, using Reiki. Mm -hmm. Really, the way you learn Reiki is by doing Reiki. Um, you know, I like to say that my title is Reiki Master, but that means that I am a master student. It does not by any means mean that I have mastered Reiki. Mm -hmm. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, so can you kind of describe the process? You know, we, you know, there. What, is, what does Reiki look like to uh, some amazing audio podcast that didn't see them on our uh, volunteers? Like, what what is the process for you? Okay, so if you were to come for a, a session mm -hmm. here at Seclair or mm -hmm. at my my other place in Sarver, Full Spectrum South, um, <laughs> plug, plug, <laughs> uh, you would come in um, and I have a massage table, mm -hmm. but you would lie down on fully clothed. Um, take off your shoes, a heavy belt, any heavy jewelry, anything that would keep you from being com comfortable. It's all about you being comfortable. Um, if you're not comfortable laying on your back, you could lay on your side, or we could even work in a chair, which is what we did with you ladies today. So, as I said, the client remains fully clothed. I will usually start at the head and ask the same questions that I asked of you. You know, may I give you Reiki? Is it all right if I put my hands directly on you? And then also, is there any particular point um, where you're having physical challenges? We didn't go into that here. Um, so I will have that in my awareness. I'll take a moment and connect with the energy. And then I just place my hands very lightly, very, very lightly. If you, 
um, put your hand on the back of one of your hands, just almost less than the weight of your hand. It's, it's a very, very light touch. There's no muscle manipulation. And I just, again, it's difficult to explain, but I open and allow the energy to flow through. I mean, it, when, when mm -hmm. you guys were mm -hmm. experiencing the Reiki, is, does that resonate with mm -hmm. what you were experiencing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so then uh, I'll usually have soft music playing, essential oils in the air. <laughs> um, and we, we may have one, by the way. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, we were all playing with oils beforehand. Um, and a full treatment lasts about an hour. And then... 15 or 20 minutes afterwards when they're laying on the table not wanting to get up. <laughs> that was me today. That would be you. Which is, uh, which is absolutely proper. That is absolutely proper. Like here now. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, well, I, I, you know, we, we talked about before, if anybody is not in the area, uh, what was that, ReikiInHospitals.org. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to find, you know, it, and this is pretty widespread. Like, is it? Can people, for the most part, find this? In their, Absolutely. In their if you Google, wherever? if you just Google Reiki, you're going to get lots of hits. I mean, it doesn't seem as widespread as like I see yoga everywhere, you know, in, in certain neighborhoods. Uh, but it's de it's definitely it seems like it's getting bigger. Yes, it is. It is getting bigger. Um, uh, not this past summer, the summer before, I was on the board for the uh, Reiki and Healing Festival in Western Pennsylvania. Again, we're in Western Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is this isn't San Francisco. This is uh, a little bit rural. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> um, and we did a marginal amount of advertising, and we had over 100 people, probably half of which were practitioners or had already had some experience with Reiki. The rest were very interested um, to come and see what this was about. And actually, just to be even more precise on where we were, we were at the Crooked Creek Environmental Learning Center in Armstrong mm. County. Mm -hmm. So very, very, very rural. And people came. People were interested, and they had a wonderful time. Um, there are centers all over the Pittsburgh area. Um, if you look, if you Google Reiki in Pittsburgh, you're going to find a quite a different, a, a, quite a, a large selection of practitioners and uh, wellness centers. If you want some really good information on what Reiki is, one of my mentors uh, is Pamela Miles. She operates out of New York and her website is ReikiInMedicine.org and you can find some really good information there. Uh, you can find me on the web at FullSpectrumSelf.com and also here at Seclair. Um, there uh, is a Reiki page on our website. Yes, there is. There is. <laughs> and uh, very shortly, uh, maybe by the time this is up, maybe a few weeks after, there should be. Uh, uh, we had, we took some video of a session mm -hmm. and a little bit of interview with you, uh, and that should be included on the Reiki page uh, in the near future. So you thank can you. see, uh, okay. you know, what the process is and what Julie does. So Absolutely. thank you very much. Absolutely, and I just like to add that really, if you if you feel any bit of interest. Go explore. Find someone who does Reiki and ask them if you can just try it. <laughs> I, for one, I, I'm quite happy to give taster treatments. You know, if someone's interested but they're not sure that they want to um, commit to a full hour, you know, what if it's weird? You know, I say, let's take five minutes. And like I did with yeah, you ladies, right. I'll put my hands on your head, on your shoulders, and you can see what, um, experience what it feels like. Mm -hmm. And then from there, decide. I am completely happy to talk to skeptics. And um... you see, by the smile, it, it, something tells me you take a joy in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's 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 interesting. Um, I was uh, volunteering at um, the hospital for their nurses' appreciation day. I was, and we were giving Reiki treatments to the nurses at again at Allegheny Valley Hospital. And one of the maintenance guys had come in and sat in my chair, and he had a nice experience. And then about 20 minutes, half an hour later, he shows up again with his buddy, who sits in my chair. <laughs> he says, I'm only here because he said I have to be here because my shoulder hurts. I got to tell you, I think it's a bunch of hooey. <laughs> <laughs> Is that for him? It was awesome. That's, since him, that's my favorite word, is a bunch of hooey. I said, well, okay. I said, you know, are you willing to give it a shot. Do you want to try it? 
He said, I guess so. I said, you know, because if you don't, I'm certainly not going to force you. So he sat in the chair and he agreed to, to try it. And I worked on him like I did you ladies, the top of the head, the sides of the heads, uh, head and the shoulders. And by the time I put my hands on his shoulders, and we were just chatting this whole time about whatever. And he stopped what he was saying and he said, you know, I don't know what it is, but I'm feeling something. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, something. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. you know, he had a good experience. Whether or not he takes that on to do anything more with Reiki, that's completely fine. Mm-hmm. But it, I, I really enjoy introducing people and hopefully allowing them to see that there are other things out there that they may not have experienced. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you have a lot of participants fall asleep on the table, too? It does happen, yes. Okay. Yes, and I take it as a compliment. (laughs) I know. (laughs) I think what I'd be doing. Yeah, yeah, it's completely fine. It's completely fine. You can sleep through a Reiki treatment and still receive full benefit. Okay. All right. Cool. (laughs) Excellent. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Again, Sclair.com if you want to find out more about uh, Reiki here at, at Seclair. Uh, thank you all for, for thank you for being our guinea pigs today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Yeah. Do it again. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely do it again. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, thank you for joining us here. Uh, please go to seclair.com for, for past episodes and uh, find out when we record live so you can see the live Reiki <laughs> sessions or whatever yeah. we may decide to do in future episodes here. Um, if you have any comments or ideas for future episodes, anything else, please please uh, feel free to email us at mike at And uh, please continue the conversation on our blog and comments for this episode at seclair.com slash blog. And we'll see you next time in the chatterbox. Mm-hmm.